Hello, folks. This is Gabriel Iliadis with songwriterandproducer.com, and today I will continue analyzing Suddenly, a song that I wrote and fully produced about a year ago, and this is the fifth video. In today's video, we are going to look into the outro, and this is the last part of the segmentation of the different parts of the song. And this is a very, very heavy, vocal heavy segment, section of the song. There are 16 tracks for the vocals only, and I bet there's more tracks for vocals than instrumentation. So first, uh, let me tell you that you can find the video on YouTube, and the outro starts at around four minutes. Uh, the channel is Songwriter and Producer. By the way, you can go to the site songwriterandproducer.com, and this is where we have a blog that discusses articles for producers, for songwriters. We have song critiques, and we have videos that are producer and songwriter related. So let's listen to the outro first. You make this a little bigger. It's more than Okay, I love that hummingbird. I also have produced the video, by the way, so I will go into the music. These are the 16 tracks. There's some of them here, and if I go down here, uh, this is also another one. If I go down all of these, all the way down to here, these are just the vocals. So let's deconstruct this. Let's look at the main melody of the outro. Let me start with this vocal. To no one to let go These two also. So let's start with the main melody of the outro. I'm going to put one channel here and or one track here and two down here with the aux plane. To no one to let go of. Allowed to not fall short of. His blameless and his brightness. Not aimless, not endless. His more than deep love suddenly. To no one to let go of. Okay. I have left this wet and processed or post processing. So if I. Make this, I'll take the aux out, more dry. Let's see what happens. To no one to let go of, allowed to not fall short of. Okay. His blameless and his brightness. Not aimless, not endless. As expected. A lot less loud, but also, and mostly, most importantly, a lot less processed. Uh, let's see what else we have. I'll go to this. I do this often. I use this as the, let's call it the reverb tail of the vocal, same melody. Yet another track of the same melody, but differently processed. Let's look at this. Much, much more different. Okay, I mean, look at this tail. Very long tail here. This is a different melody. Okay. 
So this adds like this. So no one to let go of. And I do not fall short of. He's blameless and his pride. Not aimless, not aimless. He's more than deep and suddenly. So no one to let go of. He's also being brighter. And I do not fall short of. He's blameless and his pride. Not aimless, not aimless. Already getting very, very busy, and we have just half the vocals and zero instrumentation. What about these four tracks? Well, if you've seen any of the other four videos I made where I examined the intro, then the verse, then the chorus, I guess three videos, uh, this, uh, these tracks have been shown, have appeared with the same melody in the chorus. So this is the chorus. His name is and his brightness. Actually, it's half of the chorus. It's more than deep love suddenly and being in love. So That's the other half. Up. It's also being by a lot to not for sure. It's pureness, it's sureness. His name is and his brightness. So the next video I'll do will be about deconstructing the melody. So I will go and I will videotape myself on the piano and explain how I was inspired melody wise. And I will go back and forth from the piano to the finished product to this, what you see in front of you to explain how melodically this came together and why these variations because this is a pretty complicated especially the outro as well as the chorus it's a very complicated um, tonality wise it's a complicated segment let's go back to how this ties with everything so i'll turn on all of these vocals uh, i'm sorry you know i forgot about these two nothing super special here but let's hear those also to no one to let go. taking one out Left and right, hard panned, no big deal. This sounds better without the IRL here, but that's for a different segment, I guess. Again, let's not forget where we came from, just for reference. Okay, now let's examine what this sounds like with just the vocals, but all of them. And then very quickly, I'll talk about the instrumentation and then end this segment. I don't want to make this a long video like the other three, because if you watch the other three, then a lot of this already makes sense. And I'm going to take this out. I mean, this, listening to this without the instruments sounds wrong in many, many ways. Way too many, you know, a lot of wetness, a lot of things that are stray here and there. But in the mix, I keep saying that it doesn't matter when you solo a track. It doesn't matter what happens with that track, either with regard to its processing or whichever part of the processing. And by processing, I mean things like EQing, reverbs, you know, anything you've done to it from being dry, right, coming from the amp in and or other inserts. But my point is, this sounds wrong now, but in the mix, it sounds okay, sounds good, as I have mentioned i think in one of the previous videos i want to make a different production of this i already have one almost done i will go through those also 
but I, as I'm listening to these vocals, I'm making these videos, I realize that uh, a more, I guess, lighter version of this song is in order, given what we have, because we have some really good vocals here and the melody. Let's turn these off, and I'll get into some of the music. And the music is very, uh, I guess... By the way, did you hear the hissing? I mean, it's just crazy uh, how much... Uh, uh, yeah, I mean this this it's not my microphone as you see it's uh, one of these plugins or two and uh, a lot of times I use uh, an NS1 or some type of noise uh, suppressor, but you cannot always get away with that It sounds good in the mix, but when you mute everything or you stop it, it's just annoying. Let's um, Start with the snare. We talked about the snare uh, At a different video a lot has happened. Here's the same snare as you've seen in the chorus very very carefully calculated the snare from a pitch perspective from a sound placement perspective from uh you know imaging perspective meaning from an eqing further tonal uh, treatment here uh, and i talked about this please watch my chorus video of the same song a little bit of compression no big deal but uh, a lot has happened before all, all of what you see here. I'm not, I have not gone through all the pitch correction that has happened on the snare. Yes, pitch correction on the snare, believe it or not. And then the arpeggiators are the same as the chorus. Okay. Let's start again. That's it. This is all of the music. Maybe with the exception of a fill-in is missing. Oh, there you go. This is it. So it was right here. So how many tracks is that? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So the vocals are exactly double the number of tracks compared as compared to the instrumentation. So let's see what happens when you add a little bit of this. Beautiful. You know, when I hear this, when I when I take its clothes off, basically, and I hope you understand the metaphor, I feel like, why am I overdoing this and that and the other? A good song, a good melody with an incredible singer like this just doesn't take much to shine. And that's why, that's why another lighter production must take place here. Hear this again. These four tracks make a big difference uh, with the melodic effect. Mm -hmm. 
By the way, we have discussed this in the chorus video, in the video about the chorus, but look how I'm sacrificing a very melodic part of the melody here, just because I have too many lyrics squeezed together and overlapping. For example, zoom in. It's, it's somewhere in here. So which one is it? It's probably this one. Let me take this out, the fade out, and make this. Can't you hear that? And, and because of these three tracks coming in with their own content, this became like that. Let me undo this and bring it where it was. Make it louder. So we missed about a third of this, which is not fair, one could say. Let's <laughs> do the same in all of these. See what's up. What is that shortcut that I can do? Any Anybody who has useful shortcuts for uh, Pro Tools, please uh, send me an email at gabriel at songwriterandproducer.com or anything else you'd like to say. Ah, okay, so these three just end with air less and then this is the long version of the of the melody here. These are uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, and really these four tracks are what makes what make the melody, this the, the unique melody of the outro. Okay, a few final words about the plugins used here. I'm going to turn this off and actually stick to the main melody of the outro. So for this one, for this one. So let's start on the first track. I'm only going to go through these four. First track here, I have an ozone with a vintage high end treatment. We saw that at the chorus also. Well, first, let's hear this dry again. Ozone does what to no one to let go of. with the ozone so let's just look at the compressor here to no one to let go of. you know one of my favorite compressors i will do a separate video for just the master bus which will be very short but sometimes i use it on vocals also the 33609 from neve to no one to let go of. to no one to let go of. okay it brings all the goodness of any vocal. If it was done right, tracked right, good singer, good melody, just makes it more pronounced. Many times I say it feels like the singer comes closer to your ear and it's like she's singing just for you. Um, typical de just a de here. To no one to let go which seems to not attenuate anything, so it's not even needed. Uh, the voice of God, I have used this lately uh, to make it thicker. To no I should probably have used a Pulte now that I'm thinking about it, but oh, there you go. That's the thickness with EQing uh, with a Pro Q. Without. With. 
Okay, then let's see this guy, this track. I could have done this with an aux, but I, when I don't have really many tracks, this is not a 100 track song exactly, I will uh, be wasteful in uh, CPU usage in order to, and, and, and create uh, duplicate tracks that I want to custom treat. In this case, an LA-2A and IR-1 for the reverb effect and, and a de-esser. Which, by the way, now that we have all this uh, reverb tail, this de-esser is doing a lot of work, as you see. Oh, Ooh. did you hear all that sibilance going away? I'm going to go to this. Huge. And in the mix, these things make a difference. So very quickly moving to this one. This makes a huge difference. I've used this plugin all over the song, especially in the chorus. Um, Contour 1, in this case, with these settings, this plugin does a bunch of things. It compresses, it EQs, it adds delay, uh, it adds tone, decay. I love these two controls here. Uh, separate videos in order. And then this guy. This track, a lot more. Okay, so as you see, I, I, I want to pause here for a second. This track, as you see, adds... In the, in the in a distortion way into the vocal. Look how much cleaner, let's hear how much cleaner the vocal is without this track. So no one's go yeah, okay, this is a vocal that sounds like it's been EQ'd, it's been um, reverbed, it's been wetted, it's been uh, compressed, maybe de-essed, but... So no one's go what happens when we add... What happens when we add this distorted effect? So no go Big difference. Huge difference. I mean, be becoming thicker is one dimension of additional processing that's happening here. The um, harmonics that the distortion effects are adding from just this one track is tremendous. I love this. I love this. I wish I could. Um, and uh, what do I have here? I have another Maserati. Okay, fine. What else? Ah, I have a Manny verb, but I'm only using the doubler and the phaser. We saw this setup in the chorus. Then we also saw this setup in the chorus. Uh, with another doubler from Waves, um, EQing, I'm taking the highs out, we saw, I remember this, and then this guy. But let's find out what makes the grit, what, I would expect to have something like a Saturn here, but no. You know what? The answer, and this is a perfect example of how, of, of why I keep saying that when it comes on plugins, to me it's more of a creative process than a formula. This is what you'll find out throughout all the videos I will be making that I do custom work on everything, every single track, every, every single point almost. I start from scratch. I don't like to have formulas because you end up having a song that sounds the same when you do that. And what I realized here, as I was trying to find out what actually added the grit, the distortion in this vocal, I realized that it's the combination of all these. So it's just the settings. Uh, and I have used the same plugins for some of the chorus vocals, and we didn't have that effect. Again, without any of these, so no one saw the go and then just, let's say, the first two. So no one saw the go 
We're coming a lot closer, yes. But if I put the doubler also, even more. By the way, this uh, vocal is so rich in highs. There you have it. That's the outro, and I will leave you with just playing it one more time on the video. This was Gabriel Iliadis with songwriter and producer.com. Thanks for watching, folks.